All right, so this video is just uh, a kind of overview, some tips on how to begin the off season. I think the off season is a really important time, obviously, for roster building uh, and kind of trying to restructure your roster, sign free agents, let go of guys, do arbitration. Um, I enjoy the off season almost as much as the regular season, uh, just because it's the the time when roster building is like the the main priority and that's kind of what what i enjoy the most so we're here on the email screen which so i just got to the off season and started today and you'll get a bunch of emails on the first day of the off season um, you'll get ones on guys who have option years um, so these two guys in my sim both uh, are opting out of their contracts and so this guy opted out with one year left and this is he voided his last contract year but he actually had two years left. He had an opt out in it and he opted out. So that's cool. And then review of the season goals. If you're playing with goals on are going to be here. I don't know, man. I don't pay a ton of attention to the owner goals. Honestly, to be honest, I pay no attention to them. Um, I just try to win and he ends up happy with me. So that's fine. What I, I, I just don't, I just don't care what, like, I'm just going to try to win. I'm going to build the team how I want to build it. And if he's not all right with that, he can let me go. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't really, and, and that, you're not going to get fired generally. If you're winning, the owner doesn't really care. If you, or at least, you know, I'm sure somebody has had a winning team where they absurdly got fired because they didn't achieve some goal. But um, I have not had that happen uh, in any of my Sims that I've played in any version of Out of the Park. As long as you're winning, the owner gets over the fact that you don't achieve, like, you know, upgrade at third base. Like, how about I just put together the team how I want and I'm going to win and you'll like me. So, you know, it's a, it's a, I read the email, but I don't really pay much attention to it. And if I can achieve goals, cool, but I'm not too worried about it. So this is the really important one, the new budget. So he tells you how much you have, and then he estimates how much you can spend on payroll uh, based off of your other expenses. And this is actually a really big increase for me. My budget was like 190 million last year. So that's an extra 26 million plus Tucker opted out and he's like 21 million a year and Cedarland was like 13. So I have a ton of money for next season. So that's always nice. And oh, my contract was extended. Cool. I, you know, I figured it would be. I've been to the playoffs like six straight seasons. And I haven't won a World Series, but I've been to two straight World Series. So, but the new budget is an important one. If you want to see kind of how that all shakes out, of course, you can go to your um, front office page and go to the accounting. See, last year I was at 192, 182 the year before. Now all of a sudden I'm at 216. That's a game changer, really. Um, puts my budget up to 11th. And I think I was 18th or 19th last year. So that's a huge change. That's awesome. And I'll tell you what personnel are leaving. You know, I already knew these guys were leaving because I renew the personnel contracts, obviously, throughout the year. Uh, I always like the top prospect lists and end of season, off season and updates, which is always cool. So I, I go through my organization, check that, and I got two top 10 prospects, holler. Um, and then, it, you know, this is just telling you the off season's beginning. Um, and then it tells you that the arbitration period is beginning. And oh, and one thing that the, where does he put this? The, oh, so, you know, this is important information that you probably already know. So season tickets, um, you have until the winter meetings to set your price and they start selling. Um, so you, you can set your ticket prices for next year between the off season and the winter meetings. And then you also have all the way until the end of the preseason to set your scouting, player development, draft, international free agent budget. You can adjust those now. And so, here are some things I recommend doing. First and foremost, what I do is I go to my roster and transaction pages, and you know, and I actually have like a pen and paper, and I <laughs> kind of write down the structure of my roster next year, and then write down kind of who the backups are and who the guys are that will be in AAA but are on the forty man. I basically have like a running sheet of my forty man, and so one important thing to do at this point here's my forty man roster is I go through. And if you go to the contract page, it tells you how many option years people have left. So what I mean, what I do is I go through and I figure out like who are my guys without option years who, you know, so now some of these guys are going to be veterans who you're not going to send down, right? And so I don't care if they have options or not. Um, so let me say like Cartea is my, he was my AAA catcher last year. He's still got an option year left. So he's cool. Like I can leave him on, I mean, he's pissed about it, but I can leave him on my 40 man and he can be my third catcher. So that's good. But then I'm going to get to guys here like Jamie Chisholm. So guy's been in Norfolk. He's never established himself in Baltimore as a regular player. And he's like last option year. So you want to figure this out now. And I have a, you, I have a tutorial video on budget and finances tip on why, 
you want to either, uh, you want, if you have a guy that you're not going to be able to trade and basically you're going to release him because, you know, maybe he's on his last option year and he's not going to make your club next year. Um, you want to release him before free agency starts because once free agency starts, next year's contracts kicks in and then you're paying him 563000 even if you release him. So if I release him now, though, like, I, you know, go go watch that video. But the gist is if I release him between the time the offseason starts before free agency hits, I'm then off the hook for any future money of his if the contract isn't guaranteed yet. And his isn't. He's on an auto-renewing contract. Again, go watch that other video for more details. So I'll go through and I'll identify guys like Chisholm or uh, Bowser is a utility guy. He's on his last option year. Guys like this, and it's like, okay, well, these are guys that either... I'm going to, you know, will they make my team next year? If the answer is like definitely yes, then cool. They can stick around with that option. So if the answer is no, then I need to find out a way to get rid of them. That's either through trade or it's through releasing them before free agent starts. So that's one thing I really recommend doing. So then the next thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do is go through your minor league teams and look for guys with this uh, you call it, might call it a pound sign or a hashtag, uh, depending on your birth uh, date of birth. It depends on what you call that, I guess. Um, so you're going to want to look at guys who you're going to need to add to your 40-man roster, like here, Ben Schilt, Dan Sheehan, Tom, Tim Wolfson. So what I do is I go through all my AAA through A-ball teams, anybody below A-ball, I'm not going to add my 40-man, and I write down the name of everybody who has a pound sign. And then I figure out which ones I need to add to my 40-man. Because this means that they're eligible for the Rule 5 draft. So if they're not added to my 40-man roster before the Rule 5 draft in December, other teams can take them. So what I do is I write down the list of all the guys, and then I have my 40-man roster minus the guys I'm getting rid of, right? Like like Tucker is, is you know, is not counting towards... He's on my 40-man still, but I'm not counting him towards my 40-man for next season yet. Um so then what I'll do is I'll figure out, you know, how much room do I have for, say I've got, you know, say I figure my 40 man after free agency hits is going to be 32 and I've got 14 guys I want to hit, right? So that's 46 guys. I've got six guys I got to figure out what I want to do. Are there like a few that maybe I don't have to protect and they won't get taken in the rule five? Cool. Or if I'm like, no, I'm probably going to lose some guys, I'll try to trade guys. Either guys off my 40-man to make room for the minor league guys, or I'll trade some of the minor league guys that I don't have room for. The time to do that is before um, the forty, the, the Rule 5 draft, sorry. So that's a really important thing. Figure out who, you know, figure out who on your 40-man doesn't have options that is not going to make your team next year and get rid of them. And then figure out if you have room on your 40-man for all the guys that you want to protect in the Rule 5. That's a big piece. And then next... You're going to want to go to salary arbitration on the salary arbitration page, you know, figure out, you know, like uh, some of these guys I'm not going to keep. Uh, I'm probably not going to tender a contract to some of these guys. But before I decide to do that, I'll shop them around and try to get a trade for them. And then free agents who can take compensation. I'm going to offer it to Tucker because he will easily reject it. The other, the, uh, Meek would definitely take it because he's just a reliever. Cedarlin would probably take it. And so you want to figure out who you want to submit a qualifying offer to because you can get a first round supplemental pick if they go and sign with somebody else. And then you want to take a look at your minor league free agents and offer contracts to any of those guys that you don't want to lose. Um, I'm in the process of offering some contracts to these guys. And so, yeah, from there, you just want to figure out what you want to do for the offseason, like what your plan is kind of like, you know, I want to fill this hole, this hole. <laughs> That's what she said. And and, you know, and also acquire this player and then figure out how you're going to do that like and i you know and then you're going to figure out oh well i have these four guys who aren't going to fit on my 40 man next year but they have trade value let's see if i can fill one of my offseason objectives by trading them so um you know the, come up with a game plan at that point i'd say you know after you go through kind of a bunch of these steps that i kind of laid out then come up with your game plan for the offseason you can of course always take a look at the offseason center to see who the free agents are going to be here um you can always go to the free agents and go to the upcoming free agents and this is telling you who's about to hit free agency so you can make some plans that way maybe and then you can always check the trading block but you know come up with a plan from there and that's going to vary based off of your team but all those other steps before then are really important so that way you don't end up uh, having guys contracts renewed that you're not going to have on your team next year and also you don't know if the guys exposed in the rule five draft that you don't want uh, exposed. So yeah, any questions um, about all that, just let me know. But that's kind of how I set out my plan for the offseason.